And I'm going to be reflecting for a moment on what the role of offering forgiveness plays in the chiba process. And I wanna focus on this experience of offering forgiveness, not necessarily as it affects the person who I need to forgive, but as how it affects me. What does it mean to offer forgiveness to someone, either someone who has truly apologized or maybe to someone who hasn't? And in both of those cases, my offer of forgiveness is about letting go and allowing wounds to close. And it doesn't need to be the same as saying that everything's okay. But in some ways, offering forgiveness is about forgiving the past for having happened. Part of that is recognizing when we're ready to forgive and when we're not and honoring how we feel. But it's important to recognize that when we say the words, I forgive you, much of what we're saying is, I'm ready to move forward. Not necessarily, I'm ready to go back to the way things were, because hopefully the way things were has been changed. The person who we're forgiving has done their own shuva and has moved forward in their own right. So forgiveness in its own way starts the path of everyone moving forward. But forgiveness for someone who has not atoned, has not asked for it, can also become a way for us not to get caught up in their sin for us not to get stuck because of what they did and what maybe they continue to do. So like all other aspects of tshuva, offering forgiveness is both complicated and transformative. It's a gift, but it's a gift that we give ourselves in the process of giving it to another person. And the experience of offering forgiveness to another should and does change the way we experience our own requests that Hashem slach lanu, mechal lanu, kaper lanu. Forgive us, pardon us, and allow us to atone. Shana tovah.